I will talk about digital processing of one of the greatest works of art, Gant Altarpiece, also known as the Lamb of God or Hetlam Hots in Dutch, painted by Flemish masters, brothers Van Eyck in the 15th century, and located in the beautiful Zimbabwe Cathedral in Ghent. I have been honored to work on this famous painting as a part of international and multidisciplinary team from Duke, Ghent University, Fri University of Brussels, and Flemish Academic Center for Science and Arts of the Royal Academy of Belgium. So what we want to do in this work? On the one hand, we want to study from art about visual features that are important for visual perception of a scene, and in this way improve our computational models of the visual system and improve computer vision algorithms. On the other hand, we want to use these image processing and computer vision methods to analyze artworks. For example, to distinguish between painter styles and to perform virtual restoration, meaning to remove signs of timing like cracks in a digitized scan, which is very interesting because it can never entirely be done in a true painting. So this virtual restoration might give us the only way to see the painting as it used to look like centuries ago before it was tasted by traces of time. What you see here is the Gantt altarpiece from the back side. I will zoom in in the panel on the middle right, Annunciation to Mary. The book in this panel is one of the mysteries behind this painting. For a long time, it was not known is it a true text and what is its content, or are these some collections of random characters with only some true fragments. Until now, only two significant groups of words were deciphered. One of them, De Visione Dei, written in red in the part of the book highlighted in yellow here. The deciphering of this text is difficult because it is written in the so-called litera formata style. And an additional difficulty is posed by the presence of this crack pattern. So what we did, we first detected these cracks on the whole book, only a fragment is shown here, and then we inpainted them, meaning we developed an algorithm which in an automatic way fills in the missing parts. And this has indeed improved the legibility of the text and additional fragments were read and deciphered. It is interesting that all these fragments refer to annunciation, so we can know what the text is about, and they all can be found in a theological book from 13th century. So this important result will serve as a basis for further research into iconographical implications of this text. I will show another example of virtual in painting on the panel of Annunciation to Gabriel, which is also on the back side of Gantt altarpiece. You can see here removal of cracks from angel's face. It might be interesting to study what would be the psychological effect difference in perception of this painting with and without the crack pattern. Apart from virtual restoration, we also want to develop methods to describe style of a painter. So we start here from jewels and precious stones, because Gantt altarpiece is very rich in precious stones and jewels. So in this way, we have a large set of data for experiments. We developed a kind of mathematical representation which is related to the so-called spatiogram, and which can be seen as a digital signature of a painter. So this digital signature represents, in this case, the spatial distribution of the lightness in a pearl. And we would like to have these digital signatures 
similar enough for the same painter and different for different painters, so that we can distinguish between painters. So we looked at a large number of pearls. The first impression is always they are very beautiful and very realistic and consistent in lighting. For us, it was important that their digital signatures are pretty consistent too. So if you look at pearls with similar lighting, the digital signatures are very similar. Now we had to hope that digital signatures for other painters will be different enough so that we can distinguish them from those of Anaik. We started from this panel, Just the Judges, which is a copy of the original panel, which was stolen in 1934. So this is the copy made by Jeff van der Weyken. And we wanted to see if we compare digital signatures of van der Weyken per pearls to those of Van Eyck, is there going to be a significant difference? So we found out that digital signatures were indeed quite different. And from those would also compute a sequence of numbers as a kind of compact representation, which showed a clear difference in style between these two painters. So we were pretty excited by this result. And we could show in the same way difference with other painters who copied Van Eyck also. Now that we have these digital signatures, we can also think of doing something more than just comparing them. We as digital image processing researchers like to play with elements of a digital image, these little squares that we call pixels. So we got the following idea. If we take this pearl of Van der Weyken and if we perturb its pixels and if we keep perturbing them until the resulting digital signature becomes similar to that of Van Eyck, we could Van Eyckify this pearl, so as to say. So we could make it appear as if it was painted by Van Eyck. Of course, you can think of the same for other objects and other painters. If we talk about pearls, it is also interesting to compare pairs of pearls and glass beads in Ghent altarpiece. There are very beautiful examples of these pairs in the painting. These are spherical objects of similar size, but with clearly dif different optical properties. And this is expressed very efficiently in the painting. And not only difference between pearls and beads, but also other materials. When you look in these fragments, the representation of wood, metal, stone, glass, it seems as if you can touch these materials. So we want to learn about visual features that dominate our impression of a given scene and to use them to improve our computational modeling and our vision algorithms, which then in return can also bring some new insights into artworks. For example, one of the main mysteries behind Ghent altarpiece is the vision of hands between Jan and Hubert. So the next challenge for us is to find out which parts or panels may have been painted by the mysterious older brother Hubert, of whom we know so little, and who might have been the greatest painter of all times. So the main message of this talk is that there is a strong interaction between art and vision science. Vision scientists can learn from art and make better vision algorithms, which in return can provide new insights into art. And this closes circle which keeps rotating, in a way, in the interaction between different disciplines, bringing new findings both in art historical context and in vision science and digital image processing. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> do, so you do you think uh, the Negify app might appear <laughs> on our iPhones soon? 
yeah, that could be a possibility. Oh. I'm looking forward to yeah. it. I want to finagify the paintings of my children. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Thank you.